Thanks everybody for joining our presentation. Um, and I'd like to start by th thanking Boston Valley Terracotta for including the CMU student team in the Architectural Ceramic Assemblies workshop this year. The first student team um, that ACAL is hosting was inspired by the relation of ceramics to its component materials, which led the team to look to geological formations as precedents for their terracotta assemblies. Um, very much like these formations, terracotta is made of minerals and water. It has the thermal and hydrological qualities of earthen bodies, and like earth, it is affected by the forces of water and heat, cracking and curing its mass in alternative conditions. The challenge for the students was to consider the effects of standard and unconventional industrial tools as forces and processes akin to those that define the geological formations. While working with a standard, the standard of industrial fabrication, the linear extrusion. So our site of exploration became the space between two industrial machines, the extruder, which forms raw clay into linear units and has been instrumental in recent resurgence of terracotta in the building industry by making it more budget friendly for larger projects. And the cutting edge computationally driven clay wire cutter designed by Boston Valley Terracotta's Peter Smith, which executes digitally controlled cuts on unfired clay. This siding focused students on the articulation and expressive depth of surface that could be extracted from a standard component in production at Boston Valley Terracotta this past spring, which we called the bridge extrusion. By exposing the intercellular pattern of the bridge extrusion, the CNC wire cutter transformed the efficiently manufactured repetitive and linear components to a set of units informed by the variation and biophilic flow patterns that the geological formations demonstrated. The choice of the standard component and standard assembly system were critical to the project development since the team had more compressed time schedule to fit into the academic calendar. So efficiencies of design, production, and assembly became critical to the decision-making. And this was an important part of the learning process in prototyping a variable biophilic screen system, which the students will now present. Our exploration started with examinations of geological cliff formations that could inform our design processes. Each examination took on one precedent to influence the logic. We were inspired by texture, aggregation logic, and performative qualities. Each exploration aimed to address various performative functions of a cliff formation. However, we figured out as some aspects needed to be prioritized over others. All five took on planting as their main function, but later diverged on their own. Performative qualities considered are planting, watering, water channeling, human interaction, sitting or leaning on the units, light and shadow qualities, providing uh, for poten uh, potentially providing for shade for uh, people. <clears throat> this exploration is influenced by the conical landforms of Cappadocia in Turkey, and it aims to create a wall garden with exposed webbing to channel water through the units. But in order to achieve organic landforms, a systemic uh, distortion is implemented. A grid of overlapping circles is distorting, distorted according to a rule set to be projected onto the units and cut at their intersecting trough. Later, the resulting form is simplified by selecting five desired units of performative quality, three to plant and two to channel water to reduce the amount of uni cuts. Smaller buffer units are later added to provide <clears throat> breaks in the aggregation. The next exploration aims to mimic the controlled striation influence from the Studlagil Canyon in Yökuldalur, Iceland. The main driver in this exploration is the sudden change in the aggregation. As such, it examines the challenge of including both a horizontal and vertical logic with different rhythms. Moments within each section are utilized to perform cuts to use these units primarily as planters and channels. <coughs> Excuse me. While cuts are more utilitarian, they also ease the transition from the horizontal to vertical pieces and cuts in the center of the horizontal sections invite people by becoming spaces for them to stand in. The 
This exploration examines the organic cuts through material resulting in exposed webbing that act as water channels. The cutting system is derived from, a sh from shifting and rearranging the cu cutting ruled surfaces over the entire aggregation, resulting in an asymmetrical distortion. Each cutting surface reveals the unit in different angles, allowing for cuts of different curvatures. Resulting pieces can be completely cut or some parts of the webbing remain intact, allowing for a break in the aggregation without an intervention on the grid. The asymmetric cuts become spaces people can lean on and rest. <clears throat> this next exploration intends to be a rainwater harv harvesting system, deriving its logic from the verticality of columnar jointing of Giants Causeway, Ireland. Undulating units channel, channel water down the webbing, cut in a sine curve. The cutting logic is inspired by the figure ground ambiguity achieved through seamless visual connections between units, aimed to create a visually appealing pattern. The water is caught by the catchment system on the top to be channeled down to feed into the planters. The entire aggregation follows the system, the system of classical, the classical head, body, foot, uh, idea. While the entire exploration is about water channeling, it ultimately is a delivery mechanism to the planter modules. Through the final exploration, the rain screen assembly design draws from the plays on positive and negative space of the Canisteinen rock in Norway. It considers the way that water flow both patterns and establishes plant life on cliff walls. Eroded by years of wind and water, the visual connectivity of its curvilinear geometries is translated into the terracotta assembly, which boasts endless potential aggregations with embedded planting and watering functions, which creates a haptic biophilic experience. After much deliberation, uh, consultation with Boston Valley Terracotta, uh, as well as some external feedback, we decided to move forward with this design as it celebrates the potential of the wire cutter as well as its planting, watering, and interactive qualities. The system is made up of only five different units uh, and uses rotated pieces and mirrored cuts to maintain seamless connections. Half of the units are the same, uh, but the arrangement and connection to other pieces creates a varied visual experience. In this system, the unit itself becomes less legible and variation within the whole takes over. While this experimentation with a reduced palette doesn't boast production advantage, it can help uh, to facilitate easier assembly. The cut to achieve the balance of the exposed webbing and the curved geometry was intended to be executed parallel to the extrusion as to cut through each piece of webbing one by one. Uh, this was an experimentation of the wire cutter's capabilities to achieve new forms by cutting against the extrusion. But during production, um, the speed of the wire was affected by cutting through the clay and then void and then clay. Uh, and so the outcome did not match the design intentions of the piece. But fortunately for us, uh, Andrew was able to adjust the cut to be perpendicular to the extrusion, which produced a similar result to the initial uh, design intent, although it lost some clarity on the figure uh, of the figure ground. In addition to the terracotta assembly, we also developed an integrated planting and watering system, uh, which could be an aquaphonic system as well. This included an insert to be attached within the central webbing of the planter pieces uh, and included drainage as well, so that it could also keep the, plant, the plants in place. Um, this also eliminates the need for watering high up in the air on the side of a building, which expands the potential of vertical applications of, this, of the terracotta units. We experimented with these potential expansions of our system over a larger field. The visual connectivity of the pieces is, ex is accentuated on a larger scale where the curves lead into one another letting the pattern endlessly climb in the vertical direction and undulate in the horizontal. The alignment of the cuts is a critical component of the design as seen in the ways that this aggregation forms an overall composition that blurs the line between the end of one piece and the beginning of another. 
For the prototype, we narrowed down the aggregation to a six by six feet grid with every unit to be about two feet by two feet. While the size made the assembly something we could execute within the period of our visit to Boston Valley, we strategically arranged the aggregation to convey the sense of visual movement and connectivity intended in the design. Out of the five units, we selected nine for the three by three unit train screen assembly. As uh, can be seen in this slide, these units were cut to precise length with a wet saw like any other extruded component that is used in a rain screen. One of the challenges it found during design process was the potential stability of the non-supported fins that are highlighted in red here, as opposed to the supported ones which are highlighted as green. Our assumption was based on the idea that removing material challenges predetermined stability of pieces to remain aligned and maintain its form. This was tested during the prototyping of the pieces and we found that the fins maintained their verticality and did not slump regardless of the support. Needless to say that this was also based on the length of the non-supported fins. Another important part of assembly process was rearranging the pieces based on their connection to the other pieces. The final organization and the sequence was decided on site based on transition of one unit into another. Track and clip, clip system was used uh, for the design assembly. Originally, the assembly was designed with vertical tracks to be less noticeable, but after understanding the thickness of the pieces, we realized that horizontal tracks would not be visible and would be a simpler assembly process. The first part involved installing the tracks horizontally. Four equidistant tracks were installed on the board and clips were attached to it, and after which all the pieces were attached with the clips. We discovered that the ease of assembly afforded by the horizontal track system, as well as the reduced height of the prototype was especially important while lifting the pieces to put them into place. Weight of piece and maneuverability were two important factors that we learned are as important as other design considerations. We learned that balance between weight of the component versus the use of more tracks is a significant part of design assembly. Um, these images highlight the finishing touches and cleanups. Moving on, you will see a few images of the final prototype. This is the one. Uh, highlighting the transition of one piece into another. As described earlier, few pieces have an integrated planting unit, which can be seen in these images. Also, you can see here the light and shadow qualities produced by the aggregation of cut pieces. Um, few close-ups that highlight planting and water channeling potential of the system. And with this, we would like to conclude and thank everyone at Boston Valley who made this assembly possible and made this a great learning experience for us. Thank you. Super. Uh, thank you. Thank you guys uh, for that. I, I know there are certain questions um, <clears throat> that are tied to more uh, plantings and sort of some of the tests or ideas you had, but I do think you've spoken a bit to those. If you can in the chat, uh, maybe address those yourselves. That may be um, uh, uh, worthwhile. There are also questions of other glazes potentially that you may have uh, uh, tested uh, during the process. 